Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be doing a massive meal prep. So today I'm gonna feature three meals that we're gonna be doing today and prepping for the week. So if you're excited to get this information, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel below and do not forget to like this video and comment. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by washing all of our vegetables. As you guys know, and I have mentioned this in previous meal prep videos that I've done, it's super important uh, that you wash all of your vegetables, that's your vegetables, all of your meats, things like that. You just wanna make sure that when you are preparing your meals, you don't leave anything to chance. And you know, whether you're getting it from the, the markets, the flea markets, or anything like that, even big you know grocery chains, you really don't know what has been going on during the handling of these things. So you just wanna make sure that you have everything washed, whether you use just regular water, or if you actually have some sort of like, you know, fruit and vegetable wash, this is essential whenever you're getting ready to prepare a healthy meal. Okay, so now that we have the broccoli washed, we're gonna go ahead and bring it over here and we're gonna chop it up. We're gonna chop it up pretty small. I don't like uh, my broccoli with like super long stems or anything. I like them pretty short. So you're seeing me here just chopping everything up and just making it kind of small. As I mentioned in some of my previous videos, I do enjoy um, food that are like more so in like bite-sized pieces. I don't like having to feel like I have to struggle with the food and have to like squeeze it in my mouth. like. <laughs> so that's why you'll see me here just really taking my time to chop everything up and just make sure that it is, um, you know, just small enough. Um, and just in case you guys are wondering, the reason why I have so much food and I'm only doing a one week meal prep here is because I'm actually making these meals for my husband and I. So there is gonna be uh, huge bowls of uh, food that you'll see here between the proteins, the vegetables, and pots of rice and that type of stuff. So that's why there's just so much. But uh, even with him, I'm chopping them up pretty small. I'm not leaving long stems on my broccoli because I just don't like long stems on the broccoli. I like them kind of short and, um, you know, just short, not long. Y'all know I love my complete seasoning, so here I am just adding some complete seasoning to my broccoli. I tend to be a little heavy-handed with the seasoning, but with this one, this isn't so bad because this isn't uh, full of salt like some of the other seasonings. And it looks like I got some on my phone, so just let me clean that off real quick. And once I have all of my seasonings there, um, I usually add a little bit of water to the broccoli, so I did that off camera. And I might add like a little bit of olive oil or something like that just to just to help everything steam and you know cook the way I want it to cook and taste the way I want it to taste. So I'm just wrapping it here in some cling wrap. Now before, back in the day, before I knew what I was doing, I would wrap it like one time with cling wrap, but that is just not enough because that microwave will tear through that cling wrap. So I have pretty much like quadruple layered this thing and then some. I just wanted to make sure that all of that steam stays in there so that broccoli will be nice and steamed. So I'm uh, pulling out my, uh, my foil. And so what I'm doing here is I am preparing this dish, um, or shall I say the, the baking pan here. So that way I can get ready for my pork chops because we're gonna do like some really thin baby pork chops. Now, I'm not dieting in this one. This is a healthy meal prep, but the pork chops are really for like, you know, just kind of those days we really don't feel like eating too healthy. So we're kind of, you know, um, I'm just making sure that everything is lean and cut and um, so we're not too bad with it, I guess. So as always, I'm here washing my all of my meats and things like that, just making sure everything is good to go. So I am piling it on and getting ready to put it in our pan so we can season it up and put it in the oven.
What am I without my complete seasoning? My onion powder, my black pepper, and my liquid smoke. So that is what is getting ready to go on these baked chops. It's, uh, I'm actually gonna work this in because I love layering my seasonings. I like making everything taste so, so good. So if you guys stay tuned, I'm gonna show you exactly how I prepare our baked chops. Now that I flipped the meat over and have done the same thing to the other side, I like to be able to use my liquid smoke. And here I am using the liquid smoke directly. Now, it's usually recommended that you mix it with water. That way you could dilute it a little bit more, but I personally like it when it's a little bit more concentrated and I can taste a little bit more of the sweetness and the smokiness of the product. And for me, I feel like it just sort of takes my meat up, like it takes my meat game up a notch. So that's why I do tend to use it. I don't use it all the time, but every now and again when I'm feeling a little bit froggy and I wanna add a little bit of kick to my meats, I'll go ahead and pull out that liquid smoke. So this is what our chops look like. So we're gonna go ahead and put these bad boys in the oven. And before we do that, we're gonna just go ahead and chop up some of these mushrooms because I really want to make this meal prep a little bit more fancy, a little more pinky up. So I figured why not just add a little bit of mushrooms to it and um, you know, just make it a little bit more healthy, a little bit more hearty. Now we are ready to go into the oven. So I'm just uh, putting a cover, putting a foil cover over the chops now. So uh, that way I can keep all of the moisture in. And I usually like to bake my chops since these are a little bit, uh, these are smaller and thinner than the normal uh, thick pork chops. I'm gonna just cook this for a little bit. So I usually start off at about 20 to 25 minutes at about anywhere from about 325 to 350. Usually I'll test it at 325 just to make sure that I'm good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in. And once I pop these in, I usually go ahead and set my timer just because I have so much other stuff going on and I'm gonna move on. So here you'll see me that I'm uh, lining my foil tray here, excuse me, lining my tray with foil because I'm getting ready to do some roasted potatoes. I really have had like such a, I don't know, like an obsession with potatoes lately. And I usually do sweet potatoes. 
But this particular night, I felt like I really wanted to prepare roasted potatoes for our upcoming meals. So that's what I'm doing here. So you'll see me putting the foil down, uh, getting ready to grab my nonstick cooking spray, and um, getting ready to chop up some small potatoes that I got from the grocery store. So that way we can go ahead and we can get started with our really yummy roasted potatoes. So next we're gonna go ahead and chop up some red, yellow, and green peppers. These peppers are gonna be added to our next meal, which is the ground turkey meal. Now normally I'll add peppers if I want a little extra zing in my uh, in my taste. If I don't want anything super bland, I just kinda of wanna, you know, kinda of get some umph to it, I will slice these or dice these up and just throw them in. And the good thing is these aren't like spicy or anything like that. They just add a little extra flavoring and just a little extra kick when I'm feeling, you know, like I wanna be fancy. So in addition to the seasonings that you see here, which are my onion and complete powder, as well as the black pepper, I like to add these in every now and again. Out of habit, I usually start my heat at medium high and I'll go ahead and I'll bring the heat down over time. 
So for the ground turkey, it really doesn't take very long to make it, especially when um, it's, it's, you know, chopped up pretty fine. So it'll usually cook, I'd say on medium heat for about, excuse me, probably about 20 minutes if you really wanna brown it up. Sometimes I like a little extra brown and a little extra char. So I might leave it on the fire for a little bit um, and just go from there. But uh, I'm just chopping it up here as you can see, mixing it in with my vegetables. because I, And I wanna also make sure with the peppers, I wanna make it very clear that for those like myself uh, who like peppers that have a little, um, that are cooked a little bit longer instead of like super, super crisp, I like to be able to cook those first. And once I cook those first, then I can go ahead and add the meat in instead of putting everything in all together at the same time. Um, I just feel like it just sort of helps with the texture of it. And um, also with the vegetables, like I've stated before in some previous meal prep videos, I don't like to... Um, cook the vegetables too long it's actually not advised that you make vegetables to the point that they're mushy because they actually deple are depleted of all of their uh, vitamins and different properties and things like that that make the vegetables uh, beneficial for your health so you just want to make sure it has a little bit of crisp to it it doesn't have to be super crispy but it has to be at least have a little crisp to it so I like it that way so I'm just here checking my roasted potatoes I just want to see if they're ready to go or not while my meat is cooking and it's not quite ready. It's not the way that I like it. I like my potatoes to be, uh, you know, thoroughly roasted, of course. I don't know anyone who likes crispy potatoes. Um, but I like my potatoes to just be, have a little bit of, um, you know, a little hardness on the outside, just a little bit. But I get to be super tender and soft on the inside. So we're going to throw this back in for just a few more minutes because it's not quite ready. Okay, so now I'm preparing to get my sweet potatoes steamed. And so the quickest way for me to steam my sweet potatoes is in the microwave. There's nothing wrong with putting it in the stove. I actually, excuse me, in the oven. I actually like putting them in the oven because I like smelling them when they're good and ready. That sweet, sweet smell. Um, but I don't have all night to be in the kitchen, right? So I know that I can go ahead and wrap these bad boys up in cling wrap and I can nuke these things, right? So that's what I'm doing here. So essentially my process for steaming the sweet potatoes is I wrap them up in cling wrap and the, as their own individual, you know, uh, their own individual cling wrap. So I wrap them up individually. And once I wrap them up in the cling wrap and I wrap them up like a few times, I make sure it's nice and tight and it's fully covered. I go back over them with a knife and I just pierce them on each side a couple times, maybe two to four times, just sort of depending on the size and the thickness of the sweet potato. And then I put them in a container. And usually I'll put a little bit of like water in the container um, just to sort of help steam them. Since they are individually wrapped, I don't find it necessary to put a top on the container. So it just goes into the microwave like that. So here I have my brown rice, which is actually gonna be my carb for all of my meal preps. So the you'll see the uh, brown rice and the broccoli are actually gonna make multiple appearances across our meal preps. So um, that's gonna be our, uh, our, our starch and that's gonna be our complex carb is gonna be the broccoli. So as a rule of thumb, as it pertains to the rice, my rule is the, uh, the two cups of water to uh, one cup of rice, but in this instance, I like to do two and one third cup just to have a little extra water So that way I can ensure it does not burn and as a little added tip You can add nonstick cooking spray to the water when you're boiling it for me It's just so helpful because it makes sure that the rice does not stick together I don't know if anybody else has been having those issues, but I definitely have had those issues in the past So just to kind of help me out I do add a little bit of the nonstick cooking spray to my boiling water, or it can be um, before it boils too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that brown rice do its thing, and we're gonna move on.
Okay, so another protein we're having is the all-time favorite chicken, right? So in this instance, this is going to be chicken that I'm going to cook stovetop. And I am actually going to uh, cut this chicken up. First, I'm going to go ahead and sort of fillet this entire breast. Once I do that, I'm going to go back through and I'm actually going to cut each uh, half into strips. So that way they are smaller. Like I said before, smaller bite-sized pieces, just the way I like it. And um, we are actually not going to do a plain chicken, but this is going to be a chicken that's going to be um, stirred in basil pesto mix. And you'll see later in the video how I bring everything together, um, how I cut everything up, how I season it up, and uh, once I put the sauce on. Here's the basil pesto sauce I was telling you guys about. I want to say that my girlfriend actually picked this up from either Dollar General or Family Dollar. I don't remember which one exactly, but I believe that's one of the stores that she says she picked that up from. But you know what? If you prefer a specific basil pesto sauce, that's completely up to you. But that is the sauce that I'm using for this particular meal prep. Okay, so now that we have everything mixed up, 
we are gonna go ahead and move on so we can get our meal preps going. So the first meal prep that we are going to do in our containers is gonna be the ground turkey meal prep. So you get to see exactly how I put this in the container, um, how everything uh, comes together in, in a meal, um, specifically for our lunches. Now, in this particular instance, I'm not measuring anything. This is just a general sort of healthy eating prep. So nothing is particular. We're not following any particular macros or anything like that. It's just we want to make sure that we stay on track with eating decently, a, a balanced diet, right? Um, so that's what you'll see here. So I'm adding my potatoes in, and now I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the broccoli in which is going to complete this particular meal prep. But remember, we still have two other meals to go. So you guys make sure you stay tuned so you can see exactly how everything else comes together, right? So now that we have our ground turkey, that's our protein. Now that we have our potatoes, that's our starch. And we have our vegetables, which is going to be our, um, our complex carbs. And this completes this meal prep here for meal one. And this is pretty much what it looks like. So this is what you can expect to see when you create your own you know, meal prep, when you do your own thing. If you're using these items, um, this is what it is. And these containers, I believe I got these from Amazon. You can use any containers, but I personally like the ones with the two compartments because I don't really like the single compartment ones. I don't like all of my food together all the time. So I figured the two compartment is best for me and three compartment was just, it's just becoming too much. I didn't wanna do all that, okay? So here um, I'm actually going through and I'm continuing the meal prep. Um, I'm doing the same thing uh, with the ground turkey, the potatoes, and the broccoli across different containers. And um, you know, I'm just sort of changing it up. So that's why we have different proteins uh, because I like to change it up a little bit. Sometimes I like to eat the same thing every day, sometimes I don't. So since I'm making this meal prep for my husband and I, I wanted to change things up so that way he wouldn't get bored. You know, I wouldn't get bored. And as you can see, I have to have my potato. I totally just ate that potato because I had to test it. But you know what, sometimes when I'm cooking, I eat anyway. And so by the time it's time for us to sit down and eat our food, I'm not even hungry anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and put our chicken on the stove. So I went ahead and I, as you can see from earlier, I went ahead and put a little olive oil in the pan, got that nice and warm. And I am adding the chicken in to my pan. And now normally with the chicken, depending on the size of the chicken will really determine how I uh, apply the heat to it. If I have a larger uh, size, like let's say for example, I did cook a breast or a half breast, I will try to like um, do uh, start the chicken off on high heat for one minute on each side and then turn it back over to its original uh, side that I had it on and cook on uh, low or medium heat uh, for usually about 20 to 30 minutes depending on the size of the breast. But since I am working with strips here, these are obviously some much smaller pieces of meat, um, I do like to work off of uh, medium to low heat, okay? And so now that we have the chicken going, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna prepare our second meal prep, right? So we're gonna start off with a little brown rice, which is gonna be the starch for this meal. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and add our chops. Now remember these chops also have like a little bit of mushroom with it too. So the mushrooms are really cool to add it in because these are smaller uh, pork chops, but even with the mushrooms, they kind of help with the texture to make it a little bit more meaty. And for mushrooms, for me, I feel like they kind of trick my mind into thinking that I'm actually eating more meat than I am. If you add them to anything, it almost makes it feel like you are eating meat. So if you're going meatless, that might be a really cool tip for you. My husband personally 
does go meatless, but he doesn't like mushrooms, so that sucks. So that's our second meal prep there. And so now um, off camera, I went ahead and took the chicken off of the stove and I'm adding the basil pesto over the chicken. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that into the chicken once I get all this crap out of this jar. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it in, mix it very well. Uh, but you know what? This is actually missing some something. What's it missing? Hmm. Oh yeah, it's missing some olive oil. How could I forget? So now that we have that, I like to mix that in. Um, and so I like to mix it in very, very well. I want to just make sure that every piece of chicken has all the pesto sauce and oil on it. And even though the chicken does look a little bit dry, it actually isn't as dry as it looks. It is. Uh, it was actually really, really good. So I'm now uh, pulling out all of my containers and just getting ready to uh, finish up this uh, this meal prep here. So that way you guys can see all of the meals, okay? So I am adding this uh, brown rice into all of the containers. And I'm just doing this real quick because I just want you to get an idea as to um, all of the work that really goes into doing a meal prep that has different things in it. You know, it's not like just the same thing, like just, oh, chicken, broccoli, and rice, right? It's like, okay, we're adding a little bit of extra stuff to it. We're adding some mushrooms, we're adding some basil pesto sauce, we steam some sweet potatoes, you know, uh, we have the ground turkey, the chicken, the chops, you know, we're really just trying to do it up to make sure that we don't get bored. And I think that's a large part of the reason why um, a lot of people fall off diets is because, um, you know, the food is just bland or it's boring. Um, it's just, you know, for them, it's just, it's not, it's not rich enough in flavor, right? So this kind of helps a little bit. It's not like gourmet, but it definitely helps to uh, kind of just give your your meal preps a little bit of an oomph. So that way you don't feel like you're just sort of going through the motions as it pertains to eating. But uh, I'm just adding in uh, my broccoli here, as you guys can see. And I try to be very sparing with the broccoli because, believe it or not, even though I made it in such a huge dish, um, between all of these, and I have about 10 containers that I'm working out of right now, uh, you know, it tends to go pretty fast. So the good thing about making so much chicken is the fact that I had so much chicken left over. And so all I had to do was just basically put this in in a container and go ahead and pop it in the fridge. And I even made a pull salad. So if you don't know what a pull salad is, I'm actually going to pop up one of my thumbnails here for a sexy salad I did recently that shows you what a pull salad is and what I refer to as a pull salad. And um, I just take the remaining chicken Put that with a pool salad and that actually makes for a really great dinner. Keep in mind these meal preps are lunches only. So that's pretty much what it is. So here are all of the meal preps. Here's our pork chops with brown rice and broccoli. Our ground turkey with uh, roasted potatoes and broccoli. And our basil pesto chicken with brown rice, sweet potato, and broccoli. These are all of our meals here ready to go for the week. And it took a lot of work. It took roughly about four hours to actually get all of the stuff together. But at the end of the day, once everything was finished, I was able to clean up and I was happy to get the hell up out of that kitchen. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this meal prep. If you guys like this meal prep, please do not forget to check out some of my other videos. I do a lot of things with meal preps, weight loss, all that kind of good stuff. Do not forget to like the video, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. That helps me out so much, you guys. And do not forget to follow me on Instagram. Send me a DM. I would love to hear from you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.